Hello Planeteers, I hope you guys are excited for this talk as I am. My name is Horatu Lenwepeng, I'm doing honors in entomology at the University of Pretoria. As Sachin already has given you guys a preview, yes, this is the talk on human evolution. So, before we even begin with other things, let's start with our hierarchy of model. We began with the earth as a bare rock, and then we began to add the atmosphere, and then we began to move the atmosphere. And then we began to drift the continents, and then we added life. On our previous talk with session, we learned that carbon, oxygen, and water regulate, are regulated by organisms. We also learned about the fascinating guy theory. And then he also told us that um, all the spheres on the planet are interconnected. So your biosphere, hydrosphere, and lithosphere are all interconnected. On this talk, we're going to look at humans, as you've seen by the pointed arrow. So, what is evolution? What is evolution basically according to religion? What does religion have to say about evolution? In Africa, we have a huge set of beliefs and we are very rich in culture and history. In one of the, of the cultural beliefs is that um, the DRC people believe that their god had a very, very bad tummy and he vomited the first people. While the Zulu people argue and say that their god Mvelingaglini sprang from a bed of reeds and came with him the first humans. However, during the times of planetary exploration and the times of people being curious about other parts of the world, trading and all of that, they came with them their own set of beliefs. So these colonizers, they came with also including Christianity. In Christianity, they believe that God created the first humans. However, the beliefs by the, 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 the beliefs of the colonizers has, has replaced the ancient traditional African traditional beliefs. This has resulted in one set of myths replacing one another. On the other hand, science offered a theory based on evidence. So what does science have to say about evolution? Where do you come from science? Charles Darwin is the first one to explain evolution when he was when he observed the finches in the Galapagos Island. He realized that they all had different um, beaks, however, they all have the same morphological tra traits. And given that at the time people were also doing artificial selection of species, he realized that there's no way that nature wouldn't select organisms too. So therefore, this means that artificial selection would have the same characteristics as natural selection. And therefore, he explained evolution as a gradual change in the characteristics over time and may lead to speciation over time. Evolution is caused by multiple factors. One of those includes mutation, which is when the, the DNA code is, in red, is read incorrectly, or the random changes in the genes of an organism. While selection pressure is any phenomenon that alters the behavior of a particular species. Gene flow is when two, population, two populations of the same species exchange genetic material, resulting in possible evolution. Genetic drift is basically when traits are conserved. However, they are conserved due to chance. Basically, we would have a particular event that occurs, maybe a volcano, a volcanic eruption, and a lot of species die. A lot of species die because they didn't, they didn't basically had the luck to, to survive. However, those that do, they didn't survive because they had the best fitted characteristics. Mutation is already stated. Basically, in, in mutation, what happens is that your DNA codes for life or for particular traits, and then some of these, these codes are, are read incorrectly resulting in mutation. And some or most of this mutation is usually not um, dangerous to the, to, to the particular organism. And some of them, if it's dangerous, it may not be passed on to offspring and therefore the particular species may die. When you watch a lot of comic movies and you read a lot of comic books, you realize that our favorite superheroes can change from just being normal humans to a different species in, the, in a split second. This is not the correct depiction of mutation. However, the true depiction of mutation would include the real-life mutation in a, spotted, in a spotted zebra. The spotted zebra has this phenomena because of pseudomelanism, which is when the melanin is properly, it's, 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 it's well distributed in the particular species. However, it's not expressed properly, resulting in a spotted zebra. Natural selection tries to explain how animals with the best fitted characteristics may survive better than the animals that do not have. By animals also may also may also refer to organisms. So basically consider this case. We have an environment that is quite dark and we have two, two we have two mice. 
they are the same species. However, because of the difference in their fare, the predator, the prey, finds it very easy to spot the light fair mice on a dark background or a dark environment. Whereas it finds it very difficult to spot a dark fair mice on a dark environment, resulting in what? Re re reduction in the population of the light fair mice. While the dark fair mice might, may enjoy the chances of, may, may basically have higher chances of survival because the bird of prey finds it very difficult to spot it. This results in the dark fair mice being able to reproduce to give out the next generation. And over time, if this keeps on happening, it will result in either the, dark fair mice, the light fair mice being extinct or the dark fair mice becoming basically a different species compared to the light fair mice. Genetic drift basically is when organisms survive just by chance and they, they, are, they are allowed to reproduce to the next generation. So consider the bottleneck effect. So what happens is that we have the first the species, the original population, and then we have a set of event. Consider this, this bottle and this as a set of event. So a lot of species die. Maybe it's a volcanic eruption and there's a few that survives. The few that survive continues to give out what? The new population, which is the new generation. The few that did not survive may become totally extinct. However, the few that didn't survive, didn't survive because they didn't have the best fitted characteristics for the particular phenomenon. They didn't survive because they just didn't have the luck to do so. And the ones that did, they were just lucky. Funder effect is, one of, is also another factor of the genetic drift. It is explained in these terms. So, we have two, two islands, island A and island B. On island A, we have the ancestral population. So all the species of butterflies are here. And then maybe two species decide, mm -mm, let's move on to explore new pastures. And then they go on to explore a new island, to colonize it. What usually happens is that they, 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 the butterflies that, that went to, to find a new island would be able to reproduce there in that particular new island and give out their new offspring. And the ones that did not will not be basically represented in that particular new island. Resulting in what? Over time, because also these two different islands, may, they may have different resources and they may have different conditions. This may result in these two um, butterflies that moved from the previous island to the new island being entirely different species. Evolution occurs in two ways. We have macroevolution and microevolution. Macroevolution is basically the type of evolution that you can witness, the type of evolution that may be seen in the phenotype, phenotype or in the physical appearance of the species, such as the, the beaks of the Galapagos finches. While microevolution is it is evolution that occurs, however, it occurs only in the genotype. And it's only when you take a microscope and do a proper PCR test, you can actually see that there's a there's been a couple of um, changes in the genome is the genome of in the genome of a particular organism. Human evolution is the evolutionary process that has led to the emergence of modern humans. This has begun with the evolution of primates. Primates, they arose in the late Cretaceous period about 6 to 5 million years ago. Their characteristics include binocular vision, feet, and hands with grasping capabilities. Primates are, 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 are divided into two suborders. We have suborders Trepsirini, which would include your bush babies, your eye eyes, and the lemurs while the suborder Haplorini would include gorillas, chimpanzees, and all, all of the others. Continental drift tries to explain, as we've already heard of it already in the previous talks, tries to explain how different primates are spread across different, different continents. So basically, when the landmass was still by Epangaya, all the primates were basically concentrated in one particular landmass. And as the continents began to drift, and so did the primates, some of them began to be only exist, began to exist only on certain continents, while others did not. Our ancestors, they were primates too, however, old world primates. The last common ancestor, which was a primate, evolved around seven to eight million years ago. And this particular primate was, this particular primate or ancestor of humans was an ancestor of humans and great apes meaning that gorillas and humans are not the same species and we are not brothers, but just distant cousins. But we definitely do share the same ancestor, which was in the old world primate. The evolution of, 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 of humans or primates 
has begun with the evolution of bipedalism. Bipedalism basically is the locomotion that involves two limbs or legs, and it has allowed our ancestors for, to, to have a greater field of vision. Because about around the time when our ancestors evolved, the conditions were changing, and so did the landmass. So basically what happened was, because of the changes in, in the, because of the climate change at the time, we, the, 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 the landmass changed from being a rainforest to a savanna. This meant that our ancestors didn't need to climb on trees anymore to, to find food. Didn't mean that they had to use trees to look for food. That meant that they had a difficulty in finding food and therefore they had to basically stand on, on their two feet to find prey easily. The injurious running hypothesis tried to explain that as the, 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 environment, the, the environment changed, this has resulted in our ancestor having to, basically let me show you the, the savanna first. This is how the savanna looks like. And given that the climate change was occurring and the, the, the environment was no longer a rainforest and it was like this, this meant that if our ancestor had to basically hide away from their, to, to, to run away from their prey, to, to run away from their predators, they would have to run. And to be able to be safe from, the, to, to be able to catch prey, they would have to run. And this resulted in basically bipedalism. And also bipedalism, one of the best, the best features of it is that it allowed our ancestors to thermoregulate, thermoregulate properly. Because when, if it's a savanna, that means it's very hot at times. And if you cannot thermoregulate properly, that's an issue. The savanna based theory basically tries to explain this, that as the conditions were changing into a savanna, our ancestors had to come up with a coping mechanism, and one of those would include bipedalism. So, Sahelanthropus chadensis is one of the, our oldest human ancestors. They date about 7 to 6 million years ago. They had a small brain case of about 320 to 380 cubic centimeters, and according to their, to their fossils, they may have had possible bipedalism. The oldest known hominin fossil is called Tumai. Adipithecus ramidius is one of the oldest also human ancestors. After their divergence from the chimpanzees, they lived about 4.4 million years ago. Of their characteristics includes a huge crisping hallux on their toes. Their brain case was also small, about 300 to 350 cubic centimeters. Another group of ancestors of humans include astro Australopithecines, which had reduced canines. They were 100% bipedal, and one of those would, um, their examples would include Lucy, Town Child, and Miss Place. They lived on Earth about 4.2 to 3.3 million years ago. Homo habilis, also called the handyman, evolved on this planet about 2.1 to 1.5 million years ago. They had a larger brain case compared to the previous human ancestors, a brain case of about 500 to 800 cubic centimeters. They made use of primitive stone tools, and they, they were capable of basically speaking. So these are the first human ancestors to begin the use of tools, and they were the first human ancestors to maybe, may have, pos have a possibility of communication. While Homo erectus is came after the Homo habilis, they have 100% almost close to human characteristics. They occurred on the planet about two to 200,000 years ago, and they're the first human ancestors to bury their dead, to make fires, and to actively hunt. Homo neanderthals, they are not 100% human ancestors, or they are not basically a direct human ancestor, but they may have had sexual relationships with them. They existed on the planet about 40,000 years ago, so not so long ago. They may have been extinct due to competition with humans. They may have, or may have also been extinct due to climate change because of the regions they lived in. The Homo neanderthals, unlike Homo sapiens, which, are, which were found mostly in Africa, the Homo neanderthals were found mostly, mostly in, the Eurasia, in the Eurasian world. So basically around Europe, Russia, and China, and India. And also, part of their extinction may have been due to because may, may have been due to, to diseases. One of the characteristics is that they were stockier, they had shorter limbs, large chest, and a huge nose. They also made use of a couple of stone tools, but they were not as sophisticated as human tools. The evolution of humans started about 195,000 years ago. We are capable of distinct speech. We make use of huge technological advances and you have a huge brain case. Back to our table. So remember, our human ancestor was a primate, an old world primate. 
and basically it gave rise to Corellini lineage and the Hominini lineage which gave rise to humans while the Corellini lineage gave rise to gorillas and chimpanzees and therefore the African great apes we did not evolve from great apes we also did not evolve from modern day primates but we did evolve from the first world primates or the old world primates who of these people has 100% human DNA they, they, they has 100% homo sapien DNA is it is it Mandela is it Maha? is it Gandhi is it also um, Donald Trump if you guessed correctly then you would have found Mandela out of Africa hypothesis try to explain how humans moved from Africa to occupy other regions of the world it is not up until around 13,000 years ago to 40,000 years ago then humans began to, to basically colonize Australia about 13,000 years ago to, 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 to basically colonize the, the Americas. Is evolution still happening now? Yes, it's still happening. However, in small changes in our genotypes, some of these changes are 100% heritable and some of these changes are not. And what do I think in terms of this? I think also one of our future evolution would be as colonizing the cosmos, maybe using technology to improve ourselves, such as brain chips, or maybe living in the skies. Who knows? We'll see. We have, don't have a limit to this. How is South Africa special into this? The Daun child was discovered in Daun in the Northwest province. Homan Lady was discovered 30, 000, 30, 30 kilometers away from Johannesburg. While the Van der Ver Caves, they hold the, the, the basically the greatest Homo erector stone tools. In summary, humans did not evolve from modern day primates, but we did evolve from old day primates. Climate change, geographical changes, and gene frequencies explain the human evolution. Evolution occurs through macro and microevolution. So, some evolution you can be able to witness, while other types of evolution you may not be able to witness. Bipedalism has allowed our human ancestors to survive, and therefore has resulted in Homo sapiens. I hope you guys enjoyed the talk. Thank you. And thank you for enjoying, for, for coming to the talk.